Why not? Right, so we're on fields and we are presently, we just, uh, I did these questions already, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, so we're on Coulomb's law. So we've got Coulomb, Newton and Kepler. What's wrong, Kate, did you? Put the laptop away. Are you doing math? <laughs> you doing math and physics? Outrageous. He's able to look back. I know. No, 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 no. Multitask means you can do both things well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Hey, Mary, who are you looking for? Are you lost? that a point charge produces an electric field um, and let's have a look at more detail what's happening here so if you remember um, if you have here a negative charge and here you have a positive charge okay. um, which way would I do it well, I guess it doesn't really matter I'll do it around the negative one here there's a field Uh, and then the distance here we'll say is R. So do you remember the formula for the force? It is electric field E. And this is charge Q. E mm -hmm. But um, who remembers the formula for the electric field strength? Here. Well, the electric field strength is 1 over 4 pi epsilon zero let me call this q2 and this one here q1 q1 over r squared why you chose q1 because the field on q1 yeah yeah so yeah yes continue so what happens if i put that in here i get this formula that the force equals one over four pi epsilon zero Q1, Q2 over R squared. But this here is just a constant, so we can call it like K. So we get the formula force equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. So this is how much force there is between uh, the two charges. This is the strength of the force of attraction. K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Now, you need to write this down. Oh, I don't need this copy. Badly. Badly.
Guys, that's the point that we did in the electric field lesson, do you remember? Yeah, but we were talking about Q1. Huh? Correct. Why do you use Q2 and not Q1? The formula is force on the charge equals the charge times the electric field strength. So, I mean, we're looking at, we're looking at the force here. So in the formula, the Q is the Q of the thing that's moving. What the same as what? Huh? I'm not sure what you're saying. Do you know what you're saying? Yeah, but for when you're not calculating the electric field, yeah. why don't you use Q2? Oh, here? Ah, because I'm looking at the electric field caused by Q1. Q1 is attracting Q2. Continue? So this is actually Coulomb's law that F equals K Q1, Q2 over R squared. And K is a constant. And uh, the constant is 8.99 times 10 to the 9. And the units are Newton's meters squared for coulomb squared Can I yeah yeah this is coulomb's law a constant hmm? well in fact it's exactly the constant one over four pi epsilon zero Re review the lesson, KJ, on electric fields. It's on the board. how Coulomb's apply, law applies here. So if you look at this picture, you've got an electron and a proton. So here, let's draw that again. And they could. Uh, no, actually, they would accept the formula once you explain each term in the formula. And we have the electron here. So there's a force here. And uh, we'll call this one Q2 and this one here Q1. And this equals... Uh, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Is there a force here? Yes, because the proton will be pulled towards the electron. Okay. And its force will be K, Q2, Q1 over R squared. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same. So the force here is the same as the force here. So then why does the electron move in a circle but the proton does not move in a circle around the electron. Why is it that the electron is the one that's moving and not the proton? And the table, the mm -hmm. table. It's because the proton's mass is bigger. So don't forget F equals MA. Mm -hmm. So for the electron, F equals MA, electron, 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 proton, proton, proton. True, these are the same. So you have here acceleration of proton is force of the proton over mass of the proton. Acceleration of the electron is force of the electron over mass of the electron. True, the forces are the same. But because this is so small, this one here will be really big. And I know compared to the electron, this mass is quite big, so this acceleration will be quite small. So it means that this one has a big acceleration and this one has a small acceleration. So in fact, the proton is moving a little bit, but not as much as the electron. So usually what we can do is, when we have something like a proton and an electron, we just really need to look at this force and we can kind of forget about this force because 
not going to be able to move the proton much. So in our picture, it's enough to look at it like this. Just the force on the electron. Okay, continue. Yeah. So therefore, often we ignore the proton. Right. When one charge is trapped in a circular order by another charge, then it will have negative potential energy because it's trapped. So for example, if you remember from mechanics, a potential energy can be one of three things. Here the potential energy is what? On the ground. No, no, thank you. Just don't complicate things now. And here... The potential energy is positive, MGH. And then here, the potential energy is negative. Negative potential energy represents that the particle is trapped. Zero means it's free. And positive means it has energy stored in it that it could do work. Negative potential energy means you have to give it energy to free it. So if his potential energy was minus 1000 joules, then somebody will have to spend 1000 joules of energy to free him. There is a formula to calculate potential energy when something is trapped, like an electron, around a proton. It's equal to this number here. And the minus is there to remind us that it's uh, negative. Here the Q should always be positive. You don't care about the sign on the Q. You must make it minus. So if you want, I suppose really you can say F equals minus K, the value of Q over R squared. You, you, put, you want the minus in front. Oh, sorry, I wrote F, sorry, potential energy. Uh, but I don't bother always. I know that I need this to be negative, so I just put the minus in front to remind me. Uh, so, um, as the radius gets bigger, so you have a bigger radius, do you, does it have more or less potential energy? More, because it's less negative. Which I know sounds weird. Uh, it's closer to being free, it's closer to being zero. Originally it was negative. Anyway, that's a formula for potential energy of a trapped, charged particle in an orbit. You should note it, please. You're doing that whole student thing where you take notes from the teacher. You, you know what's going on, right? Look, I know you're excited about Batman v Superman next week, but just come on. <laughs> just get through this week and next week, all right? Don't tell me you don't have it marked on your phone. Mm. I see it. <laughs> you don't tell me you haven't been working on your Batman costume at home for the <laughs> crowd here. No way. Yeah. Mm. I see you more as like a 1960s original Batman. You know the one I'm talking about? <laughs> How? Now that guy, he's more of a Superman person. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why? I say you're a Superman person. Why? I can tell from your haircut. <laughs> uh, it's a very Superman Clark Kent haircut. Yeah. I think? <laughs> uh, I have to get my hair cut. It's getting way too long. Yeah, like two, three months? Too long. Way too long. <laughs> I guess you can stick your hairbrush in it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So Coulomb's law tells you how much force there is between two charges. Uh, this is one of the four basic forces of nature. 
Coulomb's law is an example of what's called an inverse square law in physics. These laws are surprisingly common in physics and it's worth examining why that is. So, um, what's happening here with Coulomb, you have a charge, you have another charge here, and there's a force here, and the force is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And this is Q1 and this is Q2. But in fact, this formula, this type of formula in physics where you have a constant, a quantity, a quantity, and a distance squared, is actually quite common in physics. Surprisingly common, you might think. And the reason why might that be? So, for example, let's look at each part. Okay, constant in the formula, that's fine because, you know, there's units and you need a constant for different units. And we can kind of understand why there must be a Q1 and a Q2 because if I make this Q1 bigger, I should get more force, or if I make this Q bigger, I should get more force. Okay, that makes sense. But why R squared? Why not R, R squared, or R cubed? Why R squared? Why R squared? Well, the reason is, we can think about it like this. As we move out, we're getting further away. But if you imagine something coming out from the proton, like energy, gas, heat, it gets smaller because each imaginary sphere, uh, its area is increasing. So here's my Q. Here's a sphere around it. Try and draw it. You know what a sphere looks like. And then if we go a further distance out, we get a bigger sphere. So each time the sphere gets bigger, um, whatever it is that's coming out from the electron is getting spread over a bigger area. So if you're here, you get less of that thing, whatever that thing is, charge, force, gravity, than you would on a closer sphere. So whatever it is that's coming out of this, it has to be spread over a sphere. The area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. So as the area gets bigger, the quantity that's being spread out uh, is getting spread over a bigger area. And this will increase with r squared. So it divides by r squared. Whatever this thing is, I literally call it thing, it's getting spread over a bigger area. So you care about dividing by r squared to know how small it is. Now this is a little bit beyond what's on the exam, but it won't be the first time you see a formula that looks like this. And you might wonder why, and this is a small explanation for why. Because whatever it is that's coming out is getting spread over bigger areas. A little bit beyond what's on the course, but suitable for your general engineering education. You're all going on to engineering next year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, Hopefully indeed, just. <laughs> oh yeah, and also please note value k is really big, isn't it? Eight point nine nine times ten to the nine. nine. That's important. Right. Let's have a look at our first example. So please write this down. KJ, the whole writing thing, please. No, you see, the problem is he doesn't memorize it. <laughs> As we learned from our last lesson. You wish to. Don't. You don't. Is that any good? No, actually. Huh? No, actually. No. Superpowers. 
No, there's a small difference. I don't think there's a square in the f or. Oh my goodness! Oh, sorry. Thanks for pointing that out. I screwed that up. Um, there is no square here in this formula. Can you delete it? Yeah, it's not. It's not the same as the force. Okay, let me just fix that here. Right, okay, so let me see where are we at. We've got our proton, electron, and the distance between them is 0.1 of a nanometer. Nano. nano, yeah. So the radius is 0 0.1 nanometers, which is 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 9, which is 10 to the minus 10 meters. So the force equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, which is 8.99 times, what was it, 10 to the... Minus 10 to the 9. Yeah, and now we need the charge of the proton and the charge of an electron. That's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 all over r squared. So I get quite a small number. I get 23.1 about micro newtons uh, no sorry was it micro or nano sorry I think it was nano newtons can I get the answer back no it's gone yeah sorry it was nano uh, nano yeah okay you got this one so that's not too difficult is it right um, can you try this one for me. So it's the same deal, except uh, the only small difference is this time the proton and electron are a distance of 0 0.02, 0 0.2 nanometers apart. Right. Yeah, that's an or. The distance between them. And the electron is going around in a circular orbit. So my question is, what is the time to do one loop? I want you to try. You'll need to use some formulas from circular motion. Mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. What kind of participant is the chamber? Yeah, it's 10 to the minus 10. Because the nano is 10 to the minus 9. Yes, can you move it 1? No, 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 no. No, just think one moment. 0 0.10 is 1 over 10. Mm -hmm. So 10 to the minus 9 divided by 10 to the again is going to make the number smaller, not bigger. KJ, 0 0.1 equals 10 to the minus 1, true or false? So if I multiply this by 10 to the minus 9, I get 10 to the... Yeah. Don't, don't worry me. Please don't worry me, okay? okay. Who's your girlfriend, Carrara? Do I know her? You just said her. Do I know her? Like, tell me this. Is she a student at the ISC? Not at the ISC. Oh, because I don't know her. Was she a past student here? What nationality? I definitely would remember an Iraqi student because I've only had two. So she was born on Oh, really? Interesting. Open Arabic. I don't really picture Iraqi people being born in Ireland. I didn't think there's been people here long enough to have children. Because she'd be like 20 or something like this. 18, 20? Yeah. So that means, was she born here? Okay, so she was here maybe around about 19, around about 2000, 1999. Yeah, maybe. Didn't really know we had Iraqis in 1999 <laughs> in Ireland. Because it's interesting how the nationalities came into Ireland. I think first nationality I remember seeing in Ireland that you know weren't Irish, of course. I remember seeing um, um, Vietnamese citizens. And then Chinese. Uh, and then um, around about in 1990s, we got a lot of Polish families. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of mixed. Because I finally came here, and my mother wants you to get grand school for the BHC. Ah, my father, uh, she lives over there, she still in school, and her father works here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of nationalities now, but when I was a kid, like... <laughs> like because like she says, like, uh, her school here, and like, when she talks, stuff like her, so please just come, like, come down, come home, please go to your school. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, funny, it's funny how things can change, because when I was in high school, there was 800 students. 800, 800 students. And we all had to do uh, a survey, you know, like um, a bullying survey. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions on the survey mm -hmm. was, have you witnessed any bullying of black students? And the principal said, you don't have to answer that because we don't have any students. Oh. <laughs> um, so like, of course we have other nationalities, but they were really small. So like in my school, 800 students, it was like 798 from Ireland <laughs> and, uh, no, 796 from Ireland. So only four students international. Four okay. international students, two of them from Vietnam and actually, funny enough, mm. two of them from Iraq. Oh. <laughs> so that's some time ago. Yeah, and I'm not joking. Their names, one of them was called Saddam, Saddam? and the other one is Hussein. Hussein, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, people don't tell me about it. I guess maybe so. Born in 1999. Yeah, when I was in school. Yeah, well, when I was in high school, it would have been the 90s. Yeah, 90s, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Okay, um, do we remember the formula for circular motion? Yeah. F equals... 
you, look you. I'm gonna drink my coffee and wait for <laughs> you to fix that. <laughs> Wanna try again, KJ? Uh, basically. Uh. Circular motion. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And... A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? M omega squared R. Oh, now we're talking M omega squared R. But we have another formula for a, a, a. that's K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Now, do we know Q1? Yes. And Q2? Yes. And uh, the K? Yes. And the R? Yes. So let's calculate the force here. Or did you get it already, KJ? No, what happened to you? Oh, dude. Uh, right. The distance is 0 0.2 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay. <coughs> Squared. Right. So the force I got here was 5.77. So what's this? 10 to the minus Six. 9. That's what I got. Now, if I put that in here, um, you can get 5.77 times 10 to the minus 9 equals m omega squared r. So if you divide by the m and the r, you can get the omega squared. And then if you square root it, you can get the omega. So omega equals square root my answer divided by the mass and the radius. So the radius is 0 0.2 times 10 to the minus 9. And what constant number on the calculator is the mass of an electron? 3. Right, so I get the omega is 1.78 times 10 to the 15. But remember, t equals 2 pi over omega. So 2 pi over omega, and the time is a tiny number, tiny number, 3.5 times 10 to the minus 15 seconds. this one. How much potential energy does an electron have if it's orbiting a proton at a distance of 0.15 nanometers? the Carrara, the, the Iraqi students, one of them was my lab partner in physics. Lab partner? Yeah. But that was um, It was Hussein okay. was my lab partner. Uh, they were both brothers. Brothers? I think they were both brothers, yeah. They came with their family. And you know what else is funny actually? I worked in McDonald's for the summer uh -huh. and the two of them worked there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, s I actually saw an awful lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> they won't believe you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you got this? Yeah. 
But um, what is actually a rack like for international students? Like, would mo in your school, would they all be? It's probably mixed. Uh, would they be like international? How many white guys would be in your school, or would they all be kind of local countries? Actually, all of them like local nowadays. Yeah. So, like in your school, there'd be Saudis and. No, no. No. Like before, like, like maybe fifteen years ago. That was different. Yeah, it was different. Like. Uh, Lots of students come to the University of Baghdad. Oh yeah, okay. So it's like, uh, How about for you, KJ? Nationality-wise? No, just the one nationality, or would there be a mix? It depends on the ratio of the mix. Yeah, so what I mean is like in your class, like your physics class. In high school. In high school. All Nigerian students? Yep. 100%? 100%. Okay. Okay, but they one of the nationalities is Nigerian yeah, then. Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ireland's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. It's a good thing, I think. It's good. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, what's the formula for potential energy? It's no, no, the other one for this lesson. It's minus K Q over R. Right. So we have the K. It's 8.99 times 10 to the minus nine. And um, what is it? A proton or an electron or what was it? I know, but which was it? Just so it was an electron, okay. Uh, so electron is 1.6 times, what is it now? Oh, uh, you're right, thank you. Right, so here, who tiny number, I got minus 9.6 times 10 to the minus 18 um, joules. And you know what? You know what I'm going to do for the kick of it? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this in electron volts. Remember that unit? Yes. So in electron volts, it would be minus 59.9 electron volts of energy. Why do you use electron volts? Ah, for fun. Because actually if I'm thinking if this was an exam question, uh, that's probably what they'd do. They'd say, they would say, give your answer in electron volts and not joules or something like that. Fair enough? Yes, do you have that? Yes. Did I make a mistake? It's not minus 9.9. Nine. Minus 9 or 9? Minus 9. Are you? You said it's Nanometers. You said no, the, the 8. Oh my goodness, you are right. <laughs> on the road. So you're on a roll today, my yeah. goodness. Did you have breakfast or something? <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. You're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you eat properly. Right, let's retype that in. 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 times 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 divided by 0 0.15 divided by 10 to the power of minus 9. Oh, no, it's a big number. 9.59 joules? <laughs> Let's double check that. Maybe I mistyped. No, it is this big. Wow. So you need a lot of energy to free an Electron. electron. That's shockingly big. I, can't I have trouble believing that. I keep thinking there must be a mistake somewhere. No, it's too big for electron volts. My goodness, that's a huge number. Absolutely huge. All right, well, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Yep. Okay, here's your questions.
You got this? Yeah? Yes. What am I looking at? No. Right, let me just stop this. Can I close this? Yes.